everyone, welcome back. Um, today I'll do a demonstration on how to draw reflections in water uh, for landscape drawings. Um, but first of all, before I do, uh, Maddie actually asked me a really good question about water soluble graphite. Um, and basically, what she wanted to know was can it be used for the same blending techniques that I, I demonstrated in my previous video when I um, demonstrated the tree? Now basically you can't use water soluble graphite in the same way that you can regular graphite. Um, I've got a, a Derwent water soluble graphitone pencil here which I know you've got Maddie and that was what you were asking me about. So what I'll do, I'll do a quick demonstration just to show you the differences between the two and why you can't actually blend them. So we'll start with the uh, Derwent first, just get my knife. It'll scrape powder just the same as normal graphite. We've got a good amount on there. This is a 2B by the way. Okay. And if we try and blend that in, we can see straight away, look, just it's it's not not doing anything. Well, it's doing a little bit, but hardly anything. I'm pressing quite hard there, and it's okay. So that's about as much as you'll get with that. So now I'll show you the regular graphite and the difference that that makes. You can see straight away. That's much darker. It's being pushed into the paper. The grain is filling up with graphite, whereas this one, um, I don't know why it does that. The graphite just doesn't want to blend in, really. But this one is nice and dark. And that was 2B as well. So they're both um, 2B LEDs there, so it's a fair comparison. So you can see the difference between the two. Let me just blow that. <laughs> So that's why I wouldn't recommend um, water soluble graphite for this kind of technique. I mean, it's fantastic for wetting with water and doing all sorts of watercolour techniques, but um, for normal drawing and blending, um, I wouldn't really bother with it. Okay. Now I've already drawn out a little landscape here, just, just to give us something to reflect into the water. It's nothing special, it's just um, just a little sketch, just, just something there, you know. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to tilt this because I'm sitting at a funny angle. Here, I've got the, the tripod in between me and the table, and I'm sitting at a funny angle so I don't uh, headbutt the camera. So I'm, if that's okay, I'll just tilt that like that. I'm just going to start with an HB pencil. And, well, in fact, no, I'm not going to start with an HB pencil. I'm going to start with a 2H pencil, and I'm going to start to just mark out roughly the shape of the reflections um, that's going to come down there roughly the, the shape of the reflections that uh, I'm going to need it only has to be rough it's just a guideline just to give you some idea of where to shade in I mean, that's the beauty of reflections. They don't really have to be perfect. You know, near enough is uh, good enough. Well, in, in my opinion, anyway, I think I think so. I mean, they have to look um, reasonably in proportion with what's above it. But you can get away with uh, quite a bit. Well, that's what I'm hoping here, anyway, because this isn't, <laughs> this isn't going very well at all. I think that's about right. Uh, oh yeah, I've got that about there. A bit more coming over there. I don't know if you can actually see that on the camera. But not to worry because um, you'll see it all in a minute anyway when I start shading it in. Right. So I'll take the HB pencil and I'll just start going in this direction. Now 
And again, this, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to blend it all in towards the end. Okay, I think that's looking about just about right. Now, when you're shading, I mean, that's just a, a basic mid tone there, and obviously above it, we've got some light tones, some mid tones, and some darker tones. So we want to put those in as well, we want to be aware of them and where they are. I mean you might be looking at this now thinking, oh smoothie that looks rubbish, you've ruined it. But just wait, it'll be fine. You notice as well, I'm leaving a very thin, thin white line there between the land and the water. Um, even if it's not there in the picture, it's always good to put that in because it's like a natural separator um, for the tones. Because if you were to just go all the way up there, it's kind of get lost, and this kind of helps the eye decide which is water and which is land. And you often get these these white water lines along the edge of a bank anyway, so it never really looks wrong or out of place. Okay, we need to go darker there. shadows in under the bridge, or dark reflections I mean. If you notice as well, at the top of the bridge it's always darker than at the bottom. Obviously because there's less light there and this is picking up more light and the reflections from the water sort of highlighting it slightly as well. So, little, little trick there. I apologise if I'm not talking much while I'm doing this, I find it difficult to talk and draw at the same time. So. Okay, that's looking like it's nearly there. That looks wrong there, we need to make that bigger. Bring that across there like that. Okay. A little bit more there. the blender and this time instead of going in this direction we're going to go in this direction and start to pull it down gives a sense of um, depth in the water I'm 
mean, after you've done this, you might look at it and think, oh, I need to go darker here and there. Because you've obviously, um, you know, rubbed some of the dark graphite away with the blender and it might just need to be touched up here and there. So don't worry if it all looks too light or if it all looks, you know, like one mid-tone and flat and boring. We can soon go back in and bring the tones out again. And it's, it's, it's quite good to smooth it out as, as best as you can really because you don't want too many um, sharp pencil lines going across it or anything like that. But these variation, variations in shade are definitely what you want. Um, the, you know, the more the better really, it looks more realistic. But anything too harsh or too sharp will have the opposite effect. Unless of course it's a post or something you know sticking up there which is sort of sharp to edge then you're gonna to have to you know put that in in that way but we haven't got anything like that really here so we'll keep it all nice and smooth yes I am going across it this way as well um, towards the end you can you can go this way after you've got that sort of illusion of depth once you've done it this way, well, I forget what it's called now, horizontal that way and vertical that way, isn't it? Also, I can't remember, but anyway. Just put a little shadow under the bridge while we're about it. Okay, we'll just make this area here just a bit darker. Same just there. Okay, we'll blend those in a bit more. That's not looking too bad. So we could still go a bit darker just there though, and just, just suggest those trunks and branches a little bit in there. And the same there. Any blobs or spots that you don't like, just get the, the needle bully razor and just dab those out. Right, okay. So now we've got um, like the dark tones and the mid tones established. Now what we'll do, we'll pull out some of the lights, some of the highlights with the, uh, the needle bully eraser. Um, like we've got the light side of this tree just here, so we'll just gently pull down like that. Again, it's going to look a bit sort of stiff and hard edged at the moment, but we'll blend that in um, as we go. Same on this side. Sorry about that, I think the camera just cut out then. Okay. Hopefully that's working now. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Let's see if I just do that. I hope you can see this okay. Right, we've got a few light areas along the bank here, 
grasses and bits of shrubby stuff and everything so we'll just pull a few highlights along there as well I think that looks okay I think it needs a bit more blending just there I mean, don't be afraid or worried if you make a mistake. I mean, this is only graphite. It can be, um, you know, erased or gone over. No problem. Right, okay, I think that's near enough. Then just lightly, um, we don't want to rub in all that we've just done, but just lightly just go over it just to give it a nice sort of softer, Effect. Now, at that stage, if I just turn this round so you get a better idea, you can see we've basically just mirrored what's above it. As simple as that. I mean, it's not very good, but it's only a quick demonstration. But now, to get a bit more realism in there, what I use is this um, eraser. It's like a mechanical pencil eraser, but it's got a very, very fine... Let me hold that still and get it in focus for you. Don't get any put my hand there. A very fine tip. If I compare that with the pencil eraser, you can see the difference there. Look how fine this one is. Now this is ideal for pulling highlights out on the water. I'll just have to tilt that round again. Pulling highlights out on the water and all the little highlights. And everything and the ripples so we'll just bring out a few of those and again you have to keep wiping the end of that because if it clogs up with graphite it won't work at all I'm just doing this very roughly, it doesn't really doesn't really matter, it's just to give you an idea of how to do it. I mean you can spend a lot longer than this. Um, you know, being really careful and everything. I'll tell you what I did forget to put in, that's the reflections just under the bridge there, but that doesn't matter, we can just just do something like that, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm, get, I'm getting carried away now and I'm overdoing it, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. I mean, we've got lines going, you know, this way and that way. I know it looks a funny perspective, but um, it just gives you an idea of what can be done. If I try and get that in the frame a bit nicer, then you can see there we go. Just gives you an idea of how to go about um, doing reflections for landscapes you can see how easy that was and how effective it was um, and you don't have to bother putting all these lines in 
if you don't want to. I mean, I've made a bit of a mess there, I'll admit that. Um, if I was going to continue with this drawing, I'd certainly change that. But um, it's, it's very effective for, you know, for a very easy method. So you should all be able to do that one. So anyway, I hope that's been helpful to you. Um, if you've got any comments or any questions, leave them in the box below and I will get back to you. And thanks for viewing and I'll see you next time.